Hi folks, I'm Mike from Minnesota and welcome to my channel. Um, my channel is brought to you, my, this show is brought to you from uh, Northern Minnesota, Itasca County, uh, the footstep of uh, the Chippewa National Forest and uh, on the Leech Lake Reservation. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to do Lebanese flatbread. And uh, it, it's an extensive process, but believe me, it's worth it. I uh, consulted with uh, my technical advisor on uh, Arabic, uh, Syriac um, wording, and my uh, descendants came from northern Lebanon, the mountains, and they uh, pronounced the Arabic words a little bit different. So, speaking to a uh, uh, Maronite retired priest, Father Tony Salim, I got some wording for what this Lebanese flatbread is called. Uh, I may not be pronouncing it correctly. I only had a short time this morning to talk with them about it, but so bear with me. Uh, uh, how I pronounce it doesn't reflect on Father Tony's uh, uh, advice on this. But um, now one word he told me is kibitz. And I remember that as a, as a kid, kibitz is bread in, in uh, uh, Syriac Arabic. And, uh, and so uh, the old time pronunciation for this in the mountains, they don't use it very much anymore, would be kibitz mur'ah, kibitz mur'ah, which means uh, flatbread. And uh, nowadays down, uh, even in the mountains and down in Beirut, it would be pronounced kibitz saj, kibitz saj. So either way, it's Lebanese flatbread. Let me uh, get to my setup here. Again, as I go through this, uh, the video is for the process and I'll have the recipe posted um, in the bottom notes on my video. So the setup here is I've got freezer paper on my counter and um, I've got a uh, silicone King Arthur flower mat here, uh, which will come in handy a little bit. I'm going to be using uh, five pounds of flour for this bread recipe and extra flour uh, for use on the, on the table here. Um, I, this recipe calls for seven cups of warm water and then with yeast and salt and sugar. And I decided to use my uh, carafe or bowl from my uh, KitchenAid mixer to pour into the, uh, into the flour as I mix it. I think it's, it's, it's a lot easier than just a regular bowl. So we got that set up, um, and we're going to be using some saran wrap or, or plastic film after we make the balls, and we're going to cover that with uh, um, towels. Over here, how we're going to cook the bread is, this would be called a uh, sage maker, but what it is, is it's an upside down lock, and it gives us that dome to lay out. The, the, the bread as I, uh, I'll show you later how I'm going to do it. So um, I am going to put together the, uh, the yeast water mixture and uh, we'll come back in a minute and uh, after that proofs I'll show you how that goes into the flour and developing the flour for the uh, bread. Alright folks I'm back. I uh, put the water, yeast, sugar, salt, olive oil mixture together. It's been proofing. I put the five pounds of flour in the bowl and I put a hole in the middle. And what I'll start doing is slowly adding the water and yeast mixture a little bit at a time. And I'm going to start mixing that up and uh, it takes time and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that until I get a consistency of just a little sticky dough. So um, I'm gonna work on that and I'll be back in a couple minutes after I'm done. Well, we're back, I'm working on the dough yet. Uh, didn't use all the water, um, but it, it got a little too wet and now what I'm doing is 
I'm just uh, kneading it on this mat with some flour. And uh, I'm gonna do that for a while until it feels good. And uh, then we'll be back. Hi, welcome back. Um, I actually found a uh, opened uh, uh, container of uh, bread flour, King Arthur bread flour. So I'm using that for the uh, extra flour on my work surface here. So I've kneaded this, I'm guessing I needed this for at least 10 minutes. And um, got it good. And what I'm, what I'm going to do now is flour this surface real good. And then I'm going to take about a three quarter cup ball, like so. And I'm gonna line these all up. So I'm gonna line all of these balls up. I'm gonna cover them with uh, plastic wrap and then cover them with the towels. Um, once I get to that point, I'll uh, have you take a look at what's going on. I'll be right back. Hi folks, welcome back. Well, um, we uh, cut pieces off of that big dough ball and made little balls. Uh, my my assistant and I, unnamed assistant, Debbie. Um, so we we laid all those out. We always get around twenty balls out of out of that. So we'll get twenty loaves. I uh, after we put it on the floured surface, I sprinkle flour over the top of it. We're gonna put plastic film over the top, and we're gonna to put the uh, towels over the top. That's gonna to rest for about 30 minutes, and while that rests, we're gonna turn our uh, massage cooker on and get that up to temperature, get it cleaned off, and uh, I'll show you how I roll out and do the first, uh, first loaf. Hi folks, welcome back. Well, the uh, dough is uh, rested for 30 minutes and what I'm going to do, I've got the uh, upside down wok, which is on a, over the top of an elongated burner. I got that up to temperature. Uh, we play with the temperature as we cook it. I'm going to flatten these out. And believe me, when you do this, you kind of get flour all over the place. show you how it works. So if the dough sticks to the pin, you just need the flour a little more. And if it, if it um, comes back like a rubber band type of thing, you gotta let it rest a little bit. And then that'll help that. So I'm gonna get this pretty thin and, and it comes down to just doing it and uh, seeing where you are. Get it too thin, it will, it won't work out very good. Whenever I make bread, it reminds me of my grandmother and my mother baking this bread in the basement of our house. They used to use gas ovens, old fashioned gas ovens where the broiler was underneath. And then they put the bread on the bottom. The, the ovens were, were, were sitting on top of concrete blocks to get it up so they didn't have to bend down so low. All right. I got it fairly thin, and now what I'm gonna to try to do here is thin it out a little bit, almost like you're making a pizza. And I remember my grandmother, Mary Beater, and my mom. I can picture my grandmother doing this, and, and the thing is, is, is it took a little time figuring this out and doing this, but what I, what I found out is if I don't look at the bread and just 
do this by feel, it works out better. So I got it pretty thin. I'm gonna lay this over the sage. Might be a little bit long in this video, but uh, I'm gonna cook one side. I'm gonna flip it, cook the other side, and we'll see the, uh, the result here. Meanwhile, I got some butter out of the fridge warming up because I'll tell you what, having this warm bread with butter is unbelievable. It's really great. So what we'll do is, after I show you a couple of these, my assistant and I will work on this together as a team. I'll roll out the, the, the bread, put it on the, on the, the cooker, and uh, she'll do this part. And we just keep going as a team. It really makes a difference to have someone helping you in this process. She likes to really cook it. <laughs> Is it done, assistant? She, she gives me the thumbs up, so we're gonna pull that off, throw it on there. And I'm telling you what, that looks that looks beautiful. And uh, so I'm just going to repeat that, and we'll come back maybe, and I'll show you the uh, end result. See you in a little bit. Welcome back. Well, my assistant and I polished off that first loaf with that butter over there. I just I'm, so I'm going to do one more loaf, and I just wanted to mention that uh, after we do a loaf, cook it on the on the wok which I bought on Amazon, but I had to, I bought a completely round one with just handles and it works perfectly. So one more loaf just to show you how this is done. I spread it out by hand initially as round as I can do. You have to tell me what the, if if you do this bread it just it, it melts in your mouth. It is so good. And then what I'll do is I'll keep some loaves out. Tonight we're going to have uh, Lacha Mishwa, which is uh, shish kebab with garlic sauce, which is tatur. And uh, I'm not sure if we're going to make slota, which is salad, with this or not. I plan for it, but... We have a lot of other vegetables that we're going to grill. And then uh, actually I'm going to have it with hummus also that I made. If you watch my garlic doom or tatar video, you saw how I made the hummus. This is kind of bouncing back a little bit. I'm trying to hurry it up for the sake of the video, but, and if it bounces back, you, you gotta let it rest a little bit. But I get it down to a point where, actually I can see through the mat a little bit, the emblem of the King Arthur logo. That's what I do. And it's getting there right now. And I first uh, started doing this 
and I couldn't believe how close this tastes to uh, my grandmother and my mother's bread. Uh, if you don't get it on there right, sometimes it slides down. There we go. Messing it up a little bit. <clears throat> On my stove here with this elongated burner, I have it set at around four and a half. I mean, you're going to have to play with it. Get a whole piece there. If you try this at home on your stove. So normally my wife, my assistant here, will, will be cooking this and I'll be taking my time and uh, looks good. It's beautiful. I had to learn how to make this because when we lived down in the cities, we always went to the St. Paul Flatbread Company and bought our bread. And uh, so we didn't need to do this. Well, up here I can't do it. And I'm not going to have it shipped up. So I had to learn how to do it myself. And to tell you the truth, it's, uh, it's good. It's really good. We're almost done here with this loaf. And then uh, we're going to try to crank through these. And then uh, at the end, I'll show you what, uh, what we have. So that's it. We'll be back in a little bit to show you the end result. Well, folks, that's going to be a wrap for us today. We, uh, we ended up with uh, 20 beautiful loaves of Lebanese flatbread, otherwise known as kibiz muro, and, uh, or kibiz saj. And I know I might be butchering the, uh, the, the words on that. I haven't been practicing them. I would, I'd like to thank Father Tony Salim. A Maronite Catholic priest, retired, uh, somewhat retired. He's still working at a couple churches down in the cities, uh, um, Holy Family Church in Mendota Heights and St. Mary's in Minneapolis. And, uh, um, and a cousin of mine, actually. Uh, thanks to Ancestry.com, I uh, learned that uh, Father Tony is a cousin, third or fourth cousin. His, uh, his parents or grandparents came from the same village as my grandfather, a salute in northern Lebanon in the mountains. I'd like to also thank my uh, assistant for helping with the camera work and, and the bread, unnamed assist, assistant, Debbie. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, just, just a quick tip. Be sure when you're cooking the bread to wipe the uh, sage, the uh, uh, upside down walk off be before you put another loaf on to cook it. So that's very important. Um, until next time, uh, the different camera angle today because uh, uh, the dining room table is uh, filled up with a puzzle on one end and my lure making set up on the other when I make uh, spinners. Uh, for the summer fishing and uh, I might be do a little spot on that. I'm not sure until next time from beautiful northern Minnesota This is Mike from Minnesota make every day a great day. God bless